was a norm, it was a norm that people would say the religion is not compatible with science. Until Boris Bokai changed the whole concept. He said, no, no, no. He says in one meeting, except for the Quran, that is compatible with modern science. Other scriptures, of course, he has done a lot of research in the Bible, so he does say about it is not. There are places it does go against established facts. And before I end, I want to emphasize, Quran goes hand in hand with established facts, not with theories and hypotheses. Theories sometimes do take a U-turn. We assume this, but eventually when we do research, when we have the advancement of technology, we find out something. Like for example, the sun. When I was studying in school, I'm sure people of my age, when you guys went to school, in your science you're told everything was moving except the sun. Am I okay? Sun was stationary. Everything else was just moving. A recent discovery tells us even sun revolves. It's also moving. So again, you see, and the Quran does clearly say the sun is also moving its own. Modern science made a mistake few years ago, now it changes. So in this, in the final verse of the Quran, the Quran says, Praise be to God who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness in the light. Yet those who reject faith in God Almighty take up equals with God Almighty something else that is no equals to him. See, this is the purpose. The purpose of the creation of the Islamic creed is that you worship. One true God, we call on that. And you take into you no know, association with him, anyone, even Muhammad, the loss of God. God is God, messengers are messengers. Messengers are just a means of all peace to come with a message to us. And Muhammad brought as a miracle that stands the test of time. And it gives us a clear description of what God is and what God is not. So with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you all of you for coming over. I don't know how interesting I made it. I try to make it as interesting. And uh, this walking down, I'm going to come down in all the places of the world. And I leave it to you now. Thank you. Thank you, brother. the development of scientific discovery, you have been able to relate that back to the Quran. Are there matters which are still not proven in the Quran or has everything been understood and proven? You mean to say, is there anything else out there which is yet to be proven? In the Quran, that hasn't been proven by a scientific discovery or...? Well, there are certain historicals, uh, facts, that yet science is yet to come up with. I don't have it at the top of my head. But if you're interested, I can give you those verses where science is still doing a lot of research. For example, sound. Today, American military is doing an experiment on sound. Quran talks about God destroying a nation, a community, because they rejected all the signs of the Prophet. So God Almighty, He sent with sound. And they were living high up in the hills. They were very strong. No flood can get them, no earthquake can get them. And their post was, they were physically very strong people. And they used to carve in the mountains with their own bare hands, homes. And God says, when they rejected all the signs of God Almighty, God told them that God's punishment will come. When they denied all the signs that the prophet brought, God eliminated them with sound, just the sound. And they were all found the next day like dead trees. So today, the military in America is trying to develop a weapon using sound to destroy the enemies. So Alexander, this is one example I can give you. Still doing experiment, it will not come out, but soon they will find something that will be able to destroy uh, other nations with just sound. I hope that answers you. Yeah, before we go to the next question, in relation to question you ask whether there are other things mentioned in the Quran that is not yet scientifically proven 
the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us he is the one who created the heaven and the earth. And what is between the heaven and the earth? He is the one who created the living creation and the earth as well as those living in the heaven. So today, with all the technology we are having, NASA and China recently sending satellites and all over, they still cannot come out and find a life, proof of life outside. Although they are talking about finding traces of water on the moon or on or Mars, we have mission going there to explore these things. But until today, there is no proof that there is true science, I mean, there is no life. But the Quran has already told there are all the living creatures that doesn't exist on this earth but in other planet. And we only know about our own galaxy, as the brother mentioned. This galaxy is so big to travel from one end to the other. You need to live a life of 100,000 years and travel it at the speed of light. And what is beyond our own galaxy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing this to our attention to tell us that He is the master of all that exists, which is the universe. And beyond this earth, there are surely other living creatures because they are mentioned in the Quran. And uh, I don't remember the ayah, I can't recall it uh, off head. But uh, if I just do a little research, I can give you the reference where it's mentioned they are all alive. So if 50 years from now on, or 10 years later you find that, it's a message for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given you the sign because the brother said, we will show you these uh, through you and the horizon that this is the truth. So he is showing you through that this Quran is the truth, you must follow it. It's not coming from me, it's not coming from Muhammad, it's not coming from Haq. It's coming from the Supreme Being who created us. So that's what I wanted to say on that. Now I want to want yes. Uh, you could uh, understand the statement. Yes. Science without religion is bad. Yes. Not from books. From your understanding, what is science and what is religion? Can you elaborate? You see, uh, not so you many explanations. Just one. One word. Yeah. If you want one word. <laughs> I'll give you the Islamic perspective. No, no, you are understanding. My own because book can be read by anyone. You see, religion is what guides you to spiritual well-being. Religion is what guides you to spiritual well-being. It gives you a moral value. Your very existence is just on your moral values. Not on the money you have, not on the wealth you have. Your legacy is where do you stand as, a, as an ethical person, as a person with morality. So spirituality gives you those paths to achieve that level. Science is something that affirms that God has existed. What science does is when you make discoveries, you see, we Muslims are taught from young age, when you see something that is spectacular, that amazes you, say subhanAllah, which means glory be to God. See? So the difference is, one takes you to the perfection of spiritual well-being, the other assists your spiritual well-being by giving you evidences that God has exist, and all these things could have not just come to that. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anything else, please? You say that uh, in the Quran, uh, the Muhammad says that um, uh, there are things that we do not know, and so you say that um, uh, because he said that a uh, very, very long time ago, and now we are discovering every day, maybe uh, even in the future, new things which we previously never suspected exist. Uh, may, may be existing. But then, uh, to me, that is, of course, you can look at it uh, the way that uh, you do. 
uh, to me, it just means that we are ignorant. We are ignorant not only of the things uh, which we now know, which, we, which previously we did not know. And this is just uh, something very common. Uh, there are so many things that I do not know. There are so many things that uh, you do not know. There are so many things that most, uh, even the most intelligent uh, scientists do not know. So what is so surprising about that? Then? Why do you say that that is a sign that, uh, uh, that it came from God? Quite. Very interesting question yes. the brother is asking. Uh, why we Muslim, we believe that the work brought to us human being to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is outstanding. Why? Not anything else. The brother just show you a picture of uh, Albert Einstein. He is a Nobel winner, right? In which field? In physics. 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 If you look at, uh, let's say, uh, Professor Kimball <coughs> is a a doctor, medical doctor, who also is a, prize, a Nobel Prize winner. He is a professor at the University of Toronto in Canada. In which field? In biology, embryology. You look at uh, all, the, all these Nobel winners. Uh, there is another one from Bangladesh, uh, Yunus, what is it called? Yunus. Dr. Yunus. In which field? In economics. Right? So they are showing distinction in one particular field of their studies. Then when we look at the Quran, it's giving this information to us that even though we have now advanced with so much technology and, uh, and science, there are still thousands of things that we cannot discover. Then you compare those Nobel Prize winners in each field to the knowledge brought to us by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, in the Quran you have this combination of all these disciplines of studies. You have biology, you have oceanology, studying the, the sea, deep sea water, you have uh, botany, studying the plant. The brother mentioned that these plants, the plants they have feelings. They feel happy, they feel crying. The plant we eat. They have sexes, I mean gender. Some plants have, uh, uh, some plants are unisex. Okay. Uh, and then there, there still, are also some, some, some fishes, they are still, unisex. Okay. We are not talking about that particular topic only. We are talking about all these disciplines in general. Now you come to the conclusion that every discovery in this field is already mentioned in the Quran. How can you compare that? through a man who didn't have the chance to go to school, who didn't have the tools these people are using today for you know, studying and doing their deep research, winning these Nobel Prizes. How can you compare them in each field to one single person combining all? Is that a miracle or not? No, but, uh, um, I'm a Chinese. Right. Um, I study a book called uh, La Lozi. Lozi. It's one, one of them. Uh, La Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Okay. Taoism. Ta Taoism. 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 Okay. Now, uh, he says that uh, now how, does, how does the world come into being? Right. According to the Mus Muslim, uh, the belief, uh, the, the world, the universe, is created by God. Is that right? Correct. According to uh, uh, La Lao Tzu, mm -hmm. he is also someone who lived very, very long time ago. Right. Okay. At that time, equally, we have no science. Not, not the kind, of, at least not the kind of science that we now have. He says that uh, how, how, the, how, the, how the world came into being. He said that uh, the, the world came into being through a kind of uh, 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 originally there was nothing